Hi, I'm the Urban Raja and I'm here at School of What because I'm going to take you through a few different Indian food recipes that are the nation's favourites. So, next up is Rogan Josh. Fear not. When you see the ingredients list, you think, oh my days, I'm probably gonna faint because of all of the number of kind of ingredients. But actually, it gets very simple. You make a fine masala powder. You then start to brown your meat. You add your masala powder. It's a one pot wonder. And then about an hour later, hour and a half later, the dish is absolutely perfect. Right, so this is what we use for our masala powder. We take, about, we take about sort of, you know, about sort of five to eight centimeters of cinnamon. Take a couple of bay leaves. We then use some of my favorite ingredients. Now these, oh, these black cardamom pods. And it's like the smell of autumn or the smell of wet leaves, you know, that have been on a bonfire. It's that kind of smoky scent. So you take a couple of those. You then take, and those are very different to the green um, cardamom pods, which are very, very, I guess, floral really. And, and green cardamom pods are like, kind of like the vanilla to India. So we're gonna take uh, eight green cardamom pods. And then this lovely warming spice. We take cloves, six cloves. That all goes into the pot. One teaspoon cumin seeds. One teaspoon. Generous kind of measure. Chili powder. Now you can use dried chilies if you want, and if you're going to look at using dried red chilies, then I would use about sort of five uh, dried chilies to, to add to all of this. That all goes into a blender or a spice blender or a coffee blender or something along those lines. But if your guns are up to it, then you start to put them to good use in a pestle and mortar. The finished result is this. That's what you want to end up with. You want to end up with a really lovely, oh, heady, deep, smoky kind of masala powder. Smells amazing. Okay, so that is our masala powder. That's the first thing that you want to do because you're going to need to use that. So what we're going to be doing is using a little bit of ghee. Now I use ghee, which is clarified butter. If you don't want to use um, ghee, um, then you can use some veg oil and you probably need about sort of five um, tablespoons of veg oil. So I'm going to go in with some ghee. And the heat for this pan is over kind of a medium high heat. And what we're really looking to do is buna the meat, brown the meat. So when you hear about the dish um, chicken or lamb buna, buna actually just means to brown the dish. And actually it should be a dryish dish when you're ordering a chicken or a lamb buna or something along those lines. This dish, however, is going to be lovely and silky. It's going to have a lot of density and a lot of texture to it. There's going to be a smoothness to it because we're going to introduce some yogurt. But what we're going to do now that um, ghee is nice and warm, we're going to add our lamb to the pan. So what you can hear is now the lamb going to start to brown, start to seal in all those lovely juices as well. And what will happen is as it starts to brown and cook for a little bit um, and it starts to soften up a little bit, you'll get those lovely kind of meaty juices starting to fill the pan. And the next thing that we're going to add, I'm going to take a couple of tablespoons of some ginger and garlic puree. That's gonna go in and that's just gonna cook. And what I'm looking for with the ginger and garlic puree, whilst it will coat the meat, is in a few minutes, 
we kind of want to see it sort of disappear amongst all of the juices. So the ginger and garlic paste has been cooking now in with the lamb juices. And what I'm gonna do is next up, it's time for our yogurt. And I'm using Greek yogurt because I tend to favor the slight sort of sour tang that it has. And I think that adds something to the dish. But what I'm gonna do is, um, rather than using yogurt that's come straight out of the fridge, it needs to be at about room temperature. But a little kind of tip here is that to help bring it up to the temperature of the pan, I'm going to take some of the juice, some of the liquor of the pan, and I'm going to add it to the yogurt so that I gently start to bring the temperature of the yogurt up to the same temperature as that's in the pan. So it doesn't petrify the yogurt, that's the aim of it. Now, I'm going to fold in the yogurt little by little because I want to make sure that the yogurt really assimilates with the meat and with the rest of the, the juices in the pan. So I'm taking about sort of half of the yogurt. I'm going to come back to it. Let's give that a good stir. And what will happen is that this dish changes complexion over time. So when you first start to add the yogurt in, it looks quite milky and quite pale and you know not that attractive. But actually, as the meat starts to cook and we put the lid on and the spices in, it deepens, it gets a deeper, meatier, browner kind of texture. We go in with the rest of our yogurt. Give that a good mix. And that, needs to cook for about sort of eight to ten minutes. Again over a kind of a medium kind of high heat so that you've got a texture and so the gravy's looking like this. So our sauce has kind of reduced down a little bit as well so we've lost probably about a, a quarter of our moisture in the uh, in the pan, which is exactly where we need it to be. I'm gonna take our pre-blended um, spice mix, our masala mix. Um, so remember what's gone into that? Green cardamom, black cardamom, cinnamon, bay leaves, chili, all of those great spices. And I'm gonna tip the lot into the pan. And then to add to that, we have one tablespoon of ground coriander. It just adds lovely kind of uh, aromatic kind of profile to the dish. All of that gets a good old stir in. And at this point, then just add a little bit of seasoning. Already what's happened with the addition of those spices is that the gravy is now starting to look a little bit more like it should do. You know, the colour's transformed, it's turning into this slightly deeper brown colour and that's just only going to get better over the next hour. I think, because my nostrils are telling me that this is almost done. Mmm! Mm. So all those spices have really kind of fused together really well with the lamb. But I do think it needs just a touch of salt. And I think what I'm going to answer this as well, I'm just going to take a teaspoon of garam masala. And this just kind of helps finish the dish, gives it that lovely kind of aromatic profile. And this is fennel, fennel seeds. Just, just ground together, create a nice little powder. Add a teaspoon of that, teaspoon of garam masala, teaspoon of ground fennel seeds. Oh yeah, that lamb is now just falling apart. That's just exactly how I want it to be. Mm. 
You are in for such a treat. Okay, this is ready to serve up. Oh, I can't wait to devour this. And I'm telling you now, your friends, your family, your neighbours, your work colleagues, they will absolutely love that dish. Just going to finish it with some toasted almonds just over the top there. Finish with just a little sprinkling some coriander. And there we have it. Lamb, Rogan Josh, originated by the Mughals, brought to you by Urban Raja and School of Wok. Okay, it's time to eat like an Indian and use your fingers. Food always tastes better when you eat with your fingers. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mmm. The sounds say it all. I am in heaven. Lamb Rogan Josh. Gorgeous Kashmiri dish. Try it at home. Thanks for watching the video and hopefully you picked up some tasty tips on how to create delicious Indian cooking at home. Hop on to my channel for more recipes like this. It's urbanraja.com.